Have you ever been to Isan? Isan is the biggest region of Thailand and it's massive. And in today's video, we are going to get lost in it together. We are riding the motorbike from Chiang Mai to Lai, all the way down to Sakon Nakhon, which is Ploy's hometown. We are going to spend a few days there and then I will continue solo exploring Isan. I'm visiting for the first time the city of Royet, then Nakhon Rachasima, and finally I make it to the incredible Khao Yai National Park. And yes, I slept in a tent there and I also saw a wild elephant, which was amazing. So sit back, relax and enjoy this adventure. We are riding from Chiang Mai all the way to Sakon Nakhon, which is uh, Ploy hometown. And we stop here in this little coffee shop, which looks beautiful in the middle of nowhere. Where are we now? Loi. Loi. We are in Loi. Loi province, which is really nice, very quiet and beautiful nature. And then we'll continue to Sakon Nakhon, which is uh, how far from here? 300 Yeah, we still have 300 kilometers to go. It's quite far. I think in total it's around 700 kilometers, more. Yeah, yeah. In total I think it's around 800 kilometers from Chiang Mai. It's a, it's a long journey deep into Isan, almost near the border with Laos. Sakonakon is very extreme east of Thailand. So in Loi or Lei, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it in Thai, we just spent one night there because we were actually on our way to Sakon Nakhon, which is Ploy's hometown. For those of you that follow me for a long time, you know that I've already been to Sakon Nakhon last year because unfortunately Ploy last year had a bad scooter accident in Phuket. So she spent some time in Phuket at the hospital as well, but then with her family, we decided to bring her back to Sakon Nakhon so she could recover slowly with her family in her hometown. So I spent one month there last year but this time me and Ploy are coming back to Sakon Nakhon completely healthy just to relax to chill out to see her family to eat some delicious Isan food and just to recharge our batteries what your mom cook Tom Kakai what is this egg Thai Palo Thai Palo Sakon Nakhon style. Sakon Nakhon style. Do you like? Do you like me? Like. You like this style? Oh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You didn't cook. You didn't cook. I don't know. 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 Mom, she put this on the bike. Is this like a blessing? A blessing. I really love it to come here because it's so different from the rest of Thailand, you know. I'm based in Phuket, which is super touristic, and then I spend a lot of time in Bangkok, Chiang Mai, all like big city with many foreigners, but coming to Isan in this small village is such a beautiful experience because there are only local people, almost nobody speaks English, and the atmosphere is very relaxed, very sabai sabai, everything goes extremely slow. Most people's job is just to work in a farm, take care of their animals, take care of their lands, cooking, taking care of each other is such a beautiful experience and I always enjoy coming here.
today it's time to leave Sakon Nakon. We are gonna drop Ploy at the airport because she has to fly to Bangkok and I'm gonna continue the exploration of Isan. I have a few places in mind that I want to check it out and uh, I'll bring you with me. Okay guys, I just made it to Kalasin, a city about like two hours away from Sakon Nakon. To be honest, I didn't plan to come to this city. I wanted to go to Royet, which is about 50 kilometers from here. But the crazy thing is that everything is fully booked in Royet because during those days, there is some sort of like handicraft festival and all the hotels in Royet, they are sold out. It's impossible to find a bed to sleep in Royet for today and for tomorrow. I check on booking.com, Agoda. I went on Google Maps and called the hotel directly and all of them say sorry we are fully booked because there is this big festival so here i am in the nearest city which is kalasin and then tomorrow morning i just ride to royet because i heard it's a nice city and i really wanted to check it out i just found a hotel right here right next to the lake for 400 baht a night super cheap morning guys today we leave um, Kalasi and we head to Royet quick visit of few hours in Royet and then off to Buriram here you can just donate five baht and get one of those for the fish over there I'll put ten just in case to explore Isan and these massive areas with the rice fields, plantation. It's so different from the rest of Thailand, you know. I mean, look at this rice field, how amazing and how green they are. It's guys we made it to Royet and it's really 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 beautiful the weather is perfect the Sun is shining there is such a nice atmosphere and basically there is this lake here with a park inside and a lot of bridges that connect from here to the inside of the lake and then there there is a massive tower which I heard it's a viewpoint so you can take the lift all the way up and you can enjoy the view of Royet and of course I want to go and check it out <laughs> I can also fly the drone so I will get the same view but uh, I also want to go there with the lift so the tower the tower is so busy because there are so many students and so many people. I can already see from here the viewpoint is extremely packed. So I decided I would not go up the tower because there are just too many kids. There is a line and probably upstairs is like super crowded. So I will try to fly the drone instead and uh, we should get the same view. <laughs> Let's try. Alright guys, little change of my plan because instead of going to Buriram, I decided to take a detour and come here to the Pimai Historical Park, which is basically between Buriram and Nakhon Ratchasima, which is the biggest city in Isan. So I will visit this historical park and then I'll go to Nakhon Ratchasima and spend the night there. This area of Isan is not too far from Cambodia and I heard that this historical part it looks like a mini Angkor Wat in uh, Siem Reap. The style and the architecture is pretty much the same. It's Khmer architecture. And now that I walk around, I actually see that it's very similar to Angkor Wat. Super fascinating.
Yeah, it's actually pretty small. Cannot compare to the Angkor Wat. That one was the main structure, the main temple. And here it's already finished. This is the end. So, so nothing crazy, but it's super fascinating to see that in all different areas of Thailand, you will find so many historical gems from the past, from the Siam Empire, from the Khmer Empire. And if I wasn't just riding around Isan like randomly as I'm doing right now, I would never discover these kind of places. I'm just reading now on the Amazing Thailand website, which is the tourism website of Thailand. And it said that this historical site is date back to the 11th or 12th centuries. And it was built by one of the Khmer kings. And historians say that these buildings are the same architecture techniques as Angkor Wat in Cambodia. All right, guys, let's go now to Nakhon Ratchasima, which is supposed to be the biggest city in Isan. All right, guys, made it to Nakhon Ratchasima. I'm checking some uh, hotels for tonight. Man, the prices are so cheap compared to the rest of Thailand. Compared to Bangkok, Phuket, the hotels are super cheap. Look at this. Sentara Korat, 1,600 baht. Center Point Hotel Terminal 21, it's a five-star hotel, 1,800 baht. I booked the five-star hotel for tonight. Center Point Terminal 21. I'm gonna spoil myself. No, I booked it because it's a really good price to be a five-star hotel. It's very rare to find this kind of price. And I just want to check it out. How is the hotel and how is the experience? And I've seen the picture, the swimming pool looks amazing. super cool because the hotel it's inside the shopping mall terminal 21 so it's extremely convenient you just go downstairs from the hotel and here you are in the shopping mall nice wow beautiful room the bed looks super comfy check out the view of Nakhon Ratchasima yeah cool hotel very nice room. Let's check out the swimming pool. Any cab? Swimming pool? Yes. Okay. I like this chair. This is the gym. And this is the swimming pool. Yeah, super nice. Wow. What a view. Yeah, I was wondering why it was called Korat and I just checked on Google and Korat is an alternative name to Nakhon Ratchasima. So it's same like Saigon and Ho Chi Minh City is the same city but different name. So Nakhon Ratchasima is actually Korat. That's good to know. Man, this Terminal 21 is super big and super beautiful but also very, very quiet. Extremely quiet, actually. All right, guys, I will find something to eat here and then I'll see you tomorrow and we're going to the Khao Yai National Park. I've never been there, I heard it's beautiful and I'm excited to check it out. See you tomorrow. So I'm checking on TripAdvisor top attraction in Nakora Chasima. Number one, Pimai Historical Park. That's where we went yesterday. So that's done. Number two, Nakhon Ratchasima Zoo, I'm not really interested in. Number three, Terminal 21 Korat. That's actually where I'm staying right now. In this hotel is inside the Terminal 21, so I've seen that. So if those are the three top attractions, I think that's enough for me here. Let's go to Khao Yai National Park. Alright guys, made it to the Khao Yai National Park. The entrance fee for foreign tourists is 400 baht, motorcycle 20 baht. The entrance fee is 400 baht per day. So if I want to go today and also tomorrow, I have to pay 800 baht. Unless I will sleep inside the national park, which they only have tent, it's like only camping. They don't have hotels. For hotels and resorts, you have to sleep around here, which is outside the park. And she just explained to me that they will give me everything, the tent, the sleeping bag, the mattress, everything. And it will cost me around 300 baht. So it's very cheap, actually. 
And uh, yeah, I'm actually interested. It might be a good experience to sleep inside the national park. Oh, oh, my only problem is the point number six. Prohibit loud car, black smoke and car modification. My motorbike is actually pretty loud. Uh, uh, uh. I'm a little bit uh, afraid that they might not accept me. Above 95 cannot. 95 yeah, 95 decibel. Decibel. Ah. Yeah. So I have to bring the motorbike there for testing. If it's more than 95 decibel, they will not allow me inside. Wish me luck. This car is pretty loud. It's not noisy. Ah okay, good. <laughs> not noisy, she said. Yeah, lucky. I'm officially in the national park and it looks beautiful. There are signs that says beware of wild elephant. I wish I can see some wild elephant man, it would be nice. Can you imagine while I ride and meet some wild elephant? That would be amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I'm right here and look at the park. It's all of this. It's massive. And I just enter. I'm just at the beginning right here. And this road just cuts the park in half. It's basically the entire road of the national park. So I made it to the camping site. Let's check out if they have availability for tonight. Lam Ta Kong Campground, Khao Yai National Park. So I'm gonna get a tent for two people, sleeping sack and sleeping pad. Mm. Ah, pillow. Yeah, this, okay. So I'm paying 240 baht. Okay, so this is my stuff. So moving from the five star hotel to the Camping side. I love these extremes. <laughs> That's incredible, man. We're gonna sleep together with the animals. Yeah, this. I'm all set up here in the tent. It's funny to move from the five star to the camping in just one night. <laughs> this is my tent here. There is a toilet behind me and I paid 300 baht for everything. And what I was saying earlier is that it's super convenient because by sleeping inside a national park, I don't have to pay any additional cost for the entrance. I just pay one time 400 baht and then I can stay up to five days inside the national park. Well, if I sleep outside the national park, every time I enter, I have to pay 400 baht. You got the toilet. And here you got a deer hanging out. <laughs> here there is a coffee shop and here there is a restaurant. I order omelette with rice. I think this one is elephant poo poo. Maybe there are some around here. You see here the jungle is all destroyed because probably some elephants passed from here and they created, they created the path. It's all destroyed. Uh, yeah, at the same time it will be scary to encounter an elephant like this. Just all of a sudden you turn and you see an elephant, it's scary. <laughs> but it will be a cool experience as well.
this morning I see elephant poo poo everywhere and you can see that it's fresh. This is actually the spot where I saw the elephant yesterday, so I just came back to double check. But you know, you can meet them anywhere. There is no, because there are, there are so many and they're all over the national park. But it's also true that the national park, it's really, really big. But yeah, I came back here to see if maybe I'll see some elephants again. Man, yesterday it was massive. And then yesterday when they knew that there was an elephant here, all this car, they stopped with a bunch of tourists on top. Everybody just taking pictures. Yeah, I think I got lucky, but I would love to see one more. It's all elephant poo poo everywhere yeah yesterday the elephant was right here it's very dangerous to get near the elephant they can kill you you know even the tour group yesterday they were all standing there and they didn't allow anybody to get off of the car yeah it was hanging out here yesterday man it came up from here and then he came here and then he went all the way up there this is like pure jungle 100 percent jungle look at this so wild all right guys, I think I'm gonna end this video right here, this tour of Isan. We started all the way from Chiang Mai with Ploy, then we went to Lei, then we went to Ploy's hometown, Sakon Nakon. We spent a few days there. And then I continued the road trip alone to Royet, to Nakon Rachasima, all the way down here to Khao Yai National Park. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever been here or maybe you're planning to come here. This for me was my very first time and I'm blown away, it's so beautiful. And this is just a couple of hours away from Bangkok, so it's super near, but in just two hours, you can be completely immersed in this beautiful national park in nature very quiet with wild animals everywhere it's such an experience i highly recommend it unfortunately here they don't allow to fly the drone otherwise i would have loved to just fly and check out how massive this park is but uh, i'll uh, i'll respect the rule and another thing is that isan it's massive i've just seen a small fraction of it because there are so many areas it's actually the biggest region in thailand if you check on the map you will see that isan is like huge and during this road trip i've just seen a, a fraction of it but it was a great experience and i've seen a lot of new places and uh, i'll definitely come back and explore more of Isan. I haven't seen Buriram, I haven't seen Ubar Rachatani and so many other amazing places. All right guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.